critical issue, uh, access to uh, ICT technologies, as we have been discussing in the previous uh, in the previous presentations. I had the opportunity of working uh, some time ago in the UN Secretariat for the post 2015 agenda, which uh, conducted a number of consultations worldwide that led eventually to the suggestions that ended up within the agenda 2013, the SDGs, 2030, the SDGs agenda. And in this agenda, the issue of, of technology, information technology and internet is in several parts of the agenda, in several, included in several goals. Um, for instance, clearly in education, uh, in what concerns health, um, e-health, for instance, also in, in sustainable consumption and production, um, industrial development in several areas. But I am convinced absolutely that if we were discussing this agenda nowadays, the access to technologies, access to ICT would be the SDG number 18th. It would be an SDG in itself and more so now after the pandemic in which we have seen uh, the enormous opportunities that ICT brings, but also enormous challenges and problems as, as we have seen. It is said by many that um, without innovation and particularly technological innovation, uh, the achievement of the SDGs uh, would be impossible. So yes, it is true. Um, this is very important, but also as uh, some of the colleagues uh, who have spoken before have said, there is a number of very concerning issues, uh, negative impacts, and yes, unintended consequences in a number of uh, situations which have resulted from the uh, application and the wide world use in every possible area of life of uh, technologies and digital technologies in particular. Let me remember here uh, words that were said by the Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Guterres, uh, during the High Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development in 2018. He said, technology has great potential to help deliver the SDGs, but it can also be at the root of exclusion and inequality. We need to harness the benefits of advanced technology for all. That is, we need to mediate, colleagues, the potential negative impacts that we are seeing before our eyes of these technologies. It's not a question, as a friend told me at some point, of getting upset with these technologies, of rejecting them, but taking them over and, and, and really take the initiative to address uh, the potential uh, negative consequences uh, of these technologies. Um, we need, in this context, colleagues, I'm going to suggest that the sustainable development paradigm, and particularly the SDGs, give us a tool, a practical tool, against which we can assess whether the solutions that we are going to be examining today and the problems as well, how do they fit within this broader view of sustainable development? To what extent the solutions that we are going to be discussing, and this is something that I'd like to urge all the participants when they present and discuss their solutions to assess and to examine to what extent uh, what you are thinking that could be a solution is in line with the main ideas of the sustainable development goals, which are very simple ideas. Let me share with you here, if I may, um, some images, which I hope will help me uh, explain what I am saying. This is a, um, 
this is, uh, let me try to give you the full image, if I can get rid of our pictures. Yeah, okay. There we go. This is, uh, what happened there? Okay. He said that the SDGs cover five areas of work. Sorry that I have this in Spanish, but I had no time to translate it. Uh, there are five big areas of work in, in, in the SDGs, as probably many of you know. People, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnerships. But this is a more descriptive kind of presentation of the SDGs, which certainly they are much more than a list of objectives and goals. Each objective and goal certainly is very important, but the SDG, Sustainable Development, is more than a list of goals. It is a concept. It is an, an, there is a normative dimension. And in, in this graphic, I'd like to uh, propose, suggest to you that this can be a, a useful tool to examine your uh, projects and your ideas. Um, it's in Spanish, but I think it's easy to understand. On top, it says, leave no one behind. No dejar a nadie atrás. Here, we're trying to represent the core ideas behind the SDGs against which I think you can test uh, your suggestions. Uh, at the center, you can see the main idea, the core idea of the SDGs, that development becomes non-sustainable when there is conflict between these three basic dimensions of sustainable development, economic prosperity, social inclusion, and environmental protection. Uh, development is not sustainable, it's not the development that we want, when there are conflicts between objectives, economic, our, obje our economic objectives and our social objectives or our environmental objectives. Uh, sustainable development is an attempt to harmonize these three dimensions. You can check if what you're doing is helping to do this, or is it focusing, are you guys focusing strictly on economic gains? What about social inclusion? What's the impact of what you're proposing on social inclusion or in environmental protection? And vice versa, if you are focusing on a social inclusion initiative, what's the economic dimension here? Will it make it sustainable? What's the environmental implications? And then you can check the other circles here. Are we leaving anybody behind? Why? Are we working with the institutions, with partnerships, etc.? The SDGs can provide you, I don't want to uh, stay too much in this part, with this test um, to see the consequences and moreover, the possible unintended consequences of uh, the, of the solutions that you are uh, examining. Now, let's use ICT. Yes, I'm all for that. But guys, let's not be naive. There are many problems that have been suggested already and we need to address those problems and not to continue happily advancing many uh, proposals, suggestions, approaches, artificial intelligence, this and that, without considering fully the economic environmental consequences of these initiatives. Artificial intelligence, guys, is a great thing. There's no question about that but it's eliminating massively human work. Is that, are we creating the, uh, the, the additional jobs that we no. need uh, because we are eliminating so much human work? We are about to create artificial intelligence of a general kind, not only a specialized kind as the one that we have now. When we have artificial intelligence of the general kind, there's going to be a number of ethical issues here that we need to, to discuss. But let me, let me um, cover briefly some of the problems that uh, we need to be aware of when we discuss our suggestions. I mentioned already, are we leaving anyone behind here for any reason? Are we harmonizing economic, social, 
and environmental objectives? What's going to be the impact of what we suggest in terms of the digital divide, in terms of transparency? Are we helping to enable a transition to a sustainable development, to sustainable energies? Are we, in a way or another, helping to strengthen this incredible concentration of economic power that ICT has produced, the economic, the incredible economic concentration that is producing as we speak, and also the industrial concentration. And, and I mean this in the sense that you guys will probably remember that there was a time when you had your music, your CDs, your watch somewhere else, your camera, your video, uh, your notebook in, in different apparatuses. Now you have them all together in one single little thing and many industries are trying to cope with that. But are we continuing with this trend? What can we do about that? Are we, somebody mentioned, uh, Dr. Lopez mentioned the issues and several other colleagues of climate change this, this um, existential threat, colleagues, we cannot not look into the consequences of what we are doing or suggesting in terms of climate change. Are we working possible tools that will enable institutions and countries and universities to move on to carbon neutrality? Um, there are many people working on apps which already exist that help you individually and, and companies in institutions to measure their own carbon footprint, to monitor it and reduce it. We need more of that. We need more um, um, these kinds of tools for dummies, if you allow me to say. Um, some of these ideas on climate change sometimes look like you near you need a PhD in engineering to understand it, but it is not the case. We need to uh, bridge this big issue, which is another big issue for, for all of us, which is the global illiteracy uh, in technology that we are facing all over um, the world. Let me focus on one particular thing when we, and, and I will be finishing soon, um, when we discuss ICT, and education. We need to focus, guys, on, let me emphasize two things. One is the interface between education in situations of co-presence and distant learning. Let's not forget about that, that we are only discussing what uh, technological tools are we going to be using and let's not forget that we need an interface with education in situation of co-presence. And that interface is critical. I can think of many, many problems if we um, ignore or don't pay enough attention to that interface that we all think it's necessary. Um, and also we are entering hopefully in a post-pandemic period. So there is a big need. I mean, guys, you know that there hasn't been any other time in the world where so many kids and people have been out of school at the same time and for so long. Uh, we are going to be needing what some people call remedial education and teaching, post-pandemic remedial education and teaching and uh, technology can be very instrumental. All things considered, all things that we have said can be extremely instrumental, but we will need to be extremely creative in this respect. You really think out of the box because we are competing with a world full of distractions. Anybody sitting before a screen now, when you take a class of geography, let's say, uh, remotely, it's like taking a class in a classroom, whereas next door 
you have tons of other classes, shows, concerts, violins, whatever, and with a click, you can move there. Uh, so people didn't stop learning uh, during the pandemic. They continue to learn good and bad things in the internet, for sure. So that's the world in which we have to be able to make a difference. And it's not easy at all. And so I mentioned uh, the interface and, and the post-pandemic education with that specific focus, guys. You need to do a research in your country, in your region, in your province. What are the specific needs of the remedial education and, 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 and teaching in the post-pandemic? Let me conclude by saying the following. I think it is pretty clear that we live in a world, I'm looking for um, a, we're living in a world, guys, in which there is a, um, a, a serious deficit in ethical approaches, both in public and in private life, in some areas of private life, the ones one doesn't really know if they are public or private now, a days. Um, there is also incredulity and pessimism. We have to know, we have to acknowledge that in the broader population, it's like a period is ending. There's a lot of pessimism and incredulity, and there is this abundance of unethical behavior all over the place. Vis-a-vis -vis this situation, guys, one of the most important uh, strategies in my vision, and this is what we are discussing in our network of universities in Latin America, is to lead by example, to preach by example. Otherwise, we will not be making a difference. Nobody is going to believe you that you are preaching. You have to do this. You have to do that. But I don't do it because I have so many. Pre if you don't lead by example, uh, this is not going to work. So I believe institutions of higher education must lead the way towards sustainable development, not only because they incorporate these issues in their education, research, or in their external leadership functions, but in their own management as corporations. We need universities that are carbon neutral. We need green campuses. We need energy efficient campuses. We need higher education institutions leading by example in all of these issues that we are, have been discussing this morning. This is more or less, and I conclude with this, the main objective of this network of universities to which I am currently associated, how we universities are going to preach by example. Thank you. Maria Eugenia and Cristina, thanks a lot. Thank